Okay, this video is related to the geometric distribution, and it is, um, it's actually pretty straightforward because it, it, there is a function that's built into the calculator, but I find that it is not the kind of function that is really necessary to be completed using the calculator. Um, <clears throat> and so I'll, I'll walk you through the process, and, and there's a whole lot related to the, the motivation and the graphs and all that stuff. But for now, I just want to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. So you look at the example here, it says roll a die. Oh, typo for somebody. It should say example, roll a die until the number six appears and keep a record of how many rolls it took before the six was obtained. All right, because as you remember, a die has six sides uh, numbers one through six represented by dots but still the numbers one through six are accounted for and uh, all we want to know is how many times <clears throat> or we want to keep track of how many times it would take before you were to obtain a six all right so uh, while in a binomial distribution a random variable was the number of successes in a fixed number of trials in the geometric distribution, the random variable is the number of trials it takes to achieve a success, All right? Uh, I'm very familiar with this concept even before, or I was familiar with it, even before I walked into a stat class as a student because I've, I, can, I can relate to it, and I'm sure we all can relate to it. Uh, my example, my personal example, has to do with basketball. You know, standing at the free throw, free throw line, um, just hoisting up shots, and after like the 10th, 15th shot, I'm like, hey, am I ever going to make one of these? You know, and eventually it goes in. You know, and now I don't sit there and think about the, the probability of making a shot. But, you know, the, the fundamental idea is still there. So let's say, for example, you take 100 free throws, right? 100 foul shots. And you make, let's say, 75 of them. And because of that, you're now assuming that you're a 75 percent shooter. All right. Now, then, you know, a couple days later, you start just hoisting up shots. Yeah, that that probability is going to impact how long it would take before you're able to make your first shot. So if you miss the first one, then miss the second one, then miss the third one, eventually, because of your known probability, it's going to have to balance out to that 0.75. All right, that's what this is really all, you know, geometric distributions are talking about. All right, so the properties, these, um, these four conditions that go along with the geometric distribution are essentially the same as they would be for a binomial distribution. The exception is you don't know what the number of trials are. You're, that's what you're looking for. In a binomial distribution, you knew what the number of trials were. You... You, you you were just trying to determine the probability of getting a certain number of successes. If you're just looking for, in the geometric, you're looking for one success. You want to know how many trials it's going to take to get to that one success. All right. So what we have here is a solved example that just kind of talks you through the process. But um, you And you can read through this. It, it's that That's more for you. I'd rather take you through one myself. Yeah, just so you can kind of get a, a feel for it. And so let's go to the next page. All right, and continuation of the example. All right, so... So my side example, the one I was just talking about on the previous page, I'm going to make that a brand new example. Because like I said, I could talk you through the one on the previous page, but it's like, eh, you know, it's, it's already been written. And all it would be is me just reading something that you could read easily yourself. So let's make a new example. So a person's known to be a 75% free throw shooter. What is the probability that he makes his first free throw on the 10th attempt? All right, so really I kind of look at geometric distribution as a fancy name for something that's pretty not that complicated. Because if we're looking at making his first free throw on the 10th attempt, what that's telling us is that he misses the first nine attempts. 
then makes the tenth the tenth. All right. So we're looking at this as kind of like uh, an and situation. I mean, it, it definitely is an and situation, but it's not as complicated as it might seem. All right. Now, the reason why it's called geometric has to do with the fact that it's related to an exponential function. And a geometric distribution and exponential functions are essentially the same thing, different, different names for the same thing. All right. But if I'm looking at this as saying, <clears throat> I'm going to miss my first nine attempts, I'm going to miss each one of those. All right, so there's a 75% chance that I'm going to make my shot. I'm going to write that as a fraction, three-fourths. All right, so that's the probability of a make. So I made my shot. The probability of missing it would be the complement of that. All right, so the probability of, I'll just tuck that in here. would be one-fourth. All right, so I need that one-fourth to happen nine times. So there's a couple of ways I could do that. I could write the one-fourth multiplied nine times, or I could say one-fourth raised to the ninth power. The make is just that tenth attempt. It's just one instance of a make. And so then I can crunch this out. Now, you might get an overflow depending on the, the types of values you pop in your calculator um, and, and depending on how you do it. But when you're working with fractional values raised to powers, it, it oftentimes just goes to some... Uh, approximation of zero so I'm just popping it in real quick and, it, and we're getting something so infinitesimal that it might as well be zero uh, 2.86 the calculator said uh, you know it said a bunch of decimals after that one zero two two nine four nine then has a nice little e negative six but that's scientific notation for 2.86 times 10 to the negative 6 power. Or, if we really want to think of it in you know, real terms, or re uh, relatable terms, 0 0.00000286. All right, so my probability of making my first shot on the 10th attempt would be absurdly low if I'm a 75% free throw shooter. Because the reality is, I mean, common sense kind of tells you that out of every four shots on, you know, in the long run, out of every four shots you should be making, or every four attempts you should be making three shots. Right? So it shouldn't take you too much more than four attempts before you get to your first make. All right. If you, if it takes much longer than that, then something's gone wrong, all right, with with the universe. So when you're watching a an NBA basketball game, you know it's not not typical these days right now. But you know what could happen is you watch your favorite player. Your favorite player could be a ninety percent free throw shooter, and that particular evening, that shooter just hasn't made any free throws. You know, they've, they've gone to the line like 10 times. Eh, that's an exaggeration. I don't know that they would have gone 10 times, but let's say they've gone five times and they haven't made any shots. You'd be thinking, well, well, the 90, well, 75% chance, this is the probability. What, for, for a 90% chance, that a 90% free throw shooter, the, the, the probability that they wouldn't make any would be absurdly low. You'd be looking at... You know, I don't know if I'd call it NBA history, but you'd be looking at something that doesn't happen very, very frequently. All right. Now, another thing that we'd be looking for is the mean and standard deviation because the mean is the expected value. So the mean of a geometric distribution, if we refer to the top here, it says 
The average number of times we expect to repeat the trials before success occurs is simply 1 over p, where p is the probability of success. All right, so on average, so this is a, this is a nice computation, uh, as easy as it gets. Mu is equal to 1 over p. So probability of success is, one, uh, is 3 quarters, based on that last uh, example. So 1 over 3 quarters would be 4 thirds. So on average, we should expect It's really one and one third trials. You, you can leave it as four thirds if you want. Before the first success. Right. So it's kind of a weird number, but it, it's sort of, um, it's follow, well, it's definitely following the distribution, but it also is sort of splitting the difference. If you look at, for example, something a little bit simpler, like flipping a coin, how many times should you, you know, if you're just using common sense, how many times should you have to flip a coin before you achieve your first success? Probably twice on, in, on, in the long run. You know, if you, if you were to flip the coin 100,000 times, it should work out that one set of every two times, on average, that you would get a heads and the other time you should get a tails all right that would bear itself out here because one over one half is equal to two all right the other computation that we would need is the standard deviation for this distribution all right so they give us the variance variance sigma squared is equal to one minus p over p squared so variance is equal to sigma squared, which is 1 minus p over p squared. Right. But I want sigma. That's our standard deviation. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. My pen is on the fritz. Again. All right, we can crunch this in our calculators if we want, but it's going to be one for the setup anyway. One minus three quarters over three quarters squared. I'm going to do it by hand just because I don't know. I feel like doing it by hand. One quarter nine sixteenths. Little keep change flip action. So I'm taking the one quarter and multiplying it by 16 ninths. It's going to be four ninths. Hopefully, which gives me a result of two thirds. Right. And again, we know that standard deviation is a comparative value. So when we get a number, we don't really think too hard about what that number represents until we have something to compare it to. So we just know that this is how spread out the data is or are, depending on what the right way of saying it is. Uh, as I was talking, I was buying myself time to check it in my calculator. It is two thirds. And so we're pretty comfortable with that. All right. So if I needed to make a distribution for this, at least I know what the, the center and spread of my skewed distribution would be. All right. So you got the, the center of the hump and I got the ruler in which I would be making my measurements. Um, there, there are rules related to usual and unusualness. So, you know, you start thinking in terms of number of standard deviations away from the mean. If you were to apply the empirical rule, for example, to this, you know, loosely apply it, you would say that, you know, in two thirds increments, you know, the two standard deviations on the high side of two uh, of four thirds we get you up to eight thirds, right? Which is what two and two thirds, right? So you should, you know, or basically come to the understanding 
that it would be pretty unusual to have not made your shot before your, your first attempt before the third or fourth, you know, and so something in that neighborhood, right? So, you know, it gives us valuable information for a different type of distribution. And there it is.